welcome you all to the Oil Sands Discovery Center. I'm about to do a really simplified version of the hot water process, basically showing you how we take the oil that's called bitumen out of our sand using boiling water. This demonstration is a very simplified version of the process that was patented by a gentleman named Dr. Carl Clark. And it was his hot water separation process in the early 1900s that is still the most efficient and effective way of getting the oil out of the sand today. So what I would like to do first is start by passing around a sample of oil sand. I'll just stir it up a little bit for you here. But it's the same thing that I have in the larger beaker. I'll pass this one around. What I would love to do for you is add boiling water to my oil sand sample. As I said, it's the same thing that we passed around here for you folks to take a look at. There we go. Basically produce a slurry mixture. My beaker can represent what's referred to as a primary separation vessel, but it's like a washing machine and it will continuously condition oil sand with hot water. Now since oil is lighter than water, as it's conditioning, it's going to separate from those sand grains and flow to the surface. So I'm going to stir it up a little bit for you to represent the conditioning. The definition of oil sand is really simple. If you can imagine it, it's just a regular grain of sand that's been surrounded by a layer of water and then surrounded by a layer of heavy, sticky oil that is referred to as bitumen. The reason why oil sand is so gritty and abrasive, it has a very high quartz content in it, which is a very hard mineral. And not only does it scratch the sides of my beaker, folks, but I'll just show you my spoon. We've been using this spoon now for just over a year completely worn away from stirring up the oil sand. So having quartz naturally mixed with the sand not only eats away at my beaker here, but it actually wears away all the steel equipment that it comes in contact with. And this is just a tiny glimpse of the wear and tear of all the steel equipment that happens out on the site. Quartz, of course, is harder than steel. It wears away the bottoms of the heavy hauler dump trucks and the shovels and so on. Now, we only gave our sample a couple of stirs, and after doing that, we've got a lovely amount of bitumen starting to float and froth at the surface. So what I'd like to do is skim this off. And there we go. And then I'm just going to pass this around for you folks to take an up-close and personal look at it. But as I mentioned, it is a primary separation at this stage. We're not going to use it in our cars as gasoline. So we need to process it or upgrade it into a product you may have heard about, synthetic crude oil, which is a usable product. At the moment, the bitumen that we have on this napkin, it's in a liquid state because we've heated it with hot water. There's also some sand and clay particles in here, so it does need to get further cleaned. But bitumen is considered to be viscous, and basically what that means is, the colder it gets, the harder it becomes. I have an example of raw, clean bitumen sitting at room temperature. It's quite amazing to see this. It's the exact same thing that we have on the napkin, only as I said, ours is heated. This one has been sitting here at room temperature. I'll pull it out and show you how thick and sticky it is. There we go. It's kind of like molasses. But as I mentioned, ladies and gentlemen, we can't use this in our cars as gasoline. We definitely can't pipeline it to different refineries. So this raw, clean product does need to become upgraded into that usable product, synthetic crude oil. Now, the process of upgrading, ladies and gentlemen, is basically uh, a way of breaking down molecules. The oil is separated from the sand, which is what we've demonstrated. They filter out all of those little silt and clay particles that you may have seen here on the napkin, and they actually heat this raw, clean bitumen up to such a degree the molecular structure changes. And as a result, the majority of this bitumen does form into gas vapors. Now, these vapors are collected and they're forced into the bottom of a separation vessel where they'll actually rise and as they rise they cool and condense to different levels producing different gas oil. And I have some of those to show you this morning. We've got some heavy gas oil that starts to separate out at the bottom. As the remainder of the vapors rise there's light gas oil and then towards the top there's kerosene and naphtha. Now ladies and gentlemen these are only three of a whole bunch of oils that are produced in this separation vessel. Keep in mind, these oils come from the vapors that we pulled from the bitumen that we initially took from that oil sand. But it's these three oils that are re-blended to produce that final usable product, which is synthetic crude oil. So ladies and gentlemen, this is what's pipeline from Fort McMurray all across Canada and the United States. And from synthetic crude oil, not only can they make gasoline, motor oil, airplane fuel. Take a moment to think about every single plastic material you could think of. There's something from synthetic crude oil that's put into bubble gum, toothpaste, and of course, importantly, medicines. And it is called a synthetic, referring to how they've 
synthesized or transformed the molecules when they initially heated up the bitumen to get the vapors. And if we actually visit our separation sample, we can see some layering happening. We've got the larger sand grains that I didn't stir very well at the bottom. All of these sand, silt and clay particles are starting to settle on top of that. The water in the middle and the bitumen at the surface. So depending on the site and the technology that they use, up to 90% of that water can be reused back into the whole process. And if we can imagine that we have reconditioned that water, separated our oil, and then further upgraded it into that usable product, what's actually left of the original sticky, smelly oil sand is the sand itself. So if we compare the two side by side, they are the complete opposite. Of course, we started with something really dark and sticky and, of course, oily. What we're left with is something referred to as tailing sand. Ladies and gentlemen, you need to get your hands in the speaker and feel how fine this is. Tailing sand is not commercially sold. The reason is the majority of it has to get put back into the ground when they're finished mining to reclaim the area when they're done. Now, if we combine the companies that are working in the oil sands, keeping in mind there's three major oil sand areas in Alberta, Using today's technologies, they are producing just over 1.2 million barrels of synthetic crude oil on a daily basis. It does sound like a really large number, and that number can change very quickly. Technologies change, companies expand, and so on. On my demonstration this morning, a very simplified version. It is definitely on a much smaller scale. Thank you very much, and enjoy your visit.